Arturo Soto is a Mexican photographer based in Los Angeles. He's a writer, curator, and educator with two published books. He holds a PhD, an MFA, an MA, as well as bachelor's degrees. His photography explores the relationship between places and states of mind using sequences of images of the urban environment. His work reflects the emotions and desires evoked by these spaces. On today's Crit House, Arturo Soto discusses his My Five Images from Thomas Struth, Ito Barada, Moira Davy, Michael Schmidt, and Facundo de Zavaria. So Arturo Soto, thank you for joining us on the Crit House. Um, you, you reached out to us on Instagram and uh, we looked in and said, oh, let's get this guy on the program. Um, so we're excited, um, not only because you are um, a highly educated photographer, but, but also you have chosen images that we have not seen and artists we have not talked about yet on this program. I'm very glad to be here and thanks for the opportunity to show these images. Yeah, and to talk about yourself. I mean, I want uh, let's let's learn about you and uh, who who are you as a artist or a photographer? How do you how do you talk about the things that you do and yourself in the in this world? Well, I always say that I'm a writer and photographer because writing is a big part of what I what I like and 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 what I want to do. And so um I describe myself that way, but you know, I also taught and so it's i think those those three aspects that kind of define me let's say professionally um i've also had the opportunity of live, live of living in different cities and so i think different kinds of cultural notions inform my photographs and my writing when when you were deciding on the five images how did you come about with what those five images would be yeah, so that that was an interesting challenge because I th there's many ways of doing it, obviously, and I wanted to focus on photographers that have had a big impact on on the kinds of images that I make. So, people that have influenced how I think about photography, um, perhaps with one exception, but at least four out of the five are people that have really influenced the way I think about photography and make my own images. Um, and there are people that I constantly go back to for inspiration. So that was kind of the, the rationale behind choosing those five photographers. Well, we've looked at, um, we've been looking at your images as we've been talking. Um, so we'll have that as background. And now let's, let's take a look at what those images are and we'll see how that came about. We're going to start with a, um, a photographer and a photograph that I am not familiar with either, Ito Barada. Tell us about this and this uh, image. Yes, yeah, so she's Moroccan and she became very prominent in the mid knots because of this um, body of work called uh, The Straight Project in which she photographed Tangier, where she's from. And so the pictures show different aspects of the city and how um, the social dynamics changed once Moroccans couldn't travel freely to Europe. And, 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 but it's, it's, it's a kind of documentary work that is not instrumental. It's not trying to say just one thing. You really have to pay attention to the images to really interpret what they're trying to say. And so I think this image is emblematic of that or representative of that because it's not very clear what it's about. You know, it, it on the one hand, it's about urban regeneration to a certain extent, perhaps the, the market forces at play in building all of these new, new buildings. You can kind of see that the area is getting better, but that might mean that some people are getting pushed out. So it's it's an image that is very open ended, and that is also translated in the fact that you don't know what the deal is with these bricks. You yeah. know, are they from another construction? Are they going to be so? Are they kind of like the leftovers for for some building that was built? It is very common also in 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 countries like this or in Mexico that people build their own their own houses, and so you have this aspect of like um, DIY when when the government is not there 
to aid you in 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 building these these new communities. So I feel like all of these ambivalences are are present, and it's what makes this image really interesting. But but formally also, there's a play of color. Uh, there's this harsh light um, of North Africa. Um, so it, it's also a, an image that it's not it's not trying to be perfect technically, which is something that I really admire of her work. It's good technically, but it's not perfect because obviously the the horizon line is a little bit slanted. Um, it, it's coming in at, at the scene at a weird angle, and so uh, in in a way, it's also saying that you don't need to have a perfect image in order to have an image that is full of meaning. Well, just just to say one last thing. Yeah. Uh, there's also these correspondences within the image between the colors, but also. This this mound of bricks, you know, kind of correlates to the images. Sorry, to the uh, hill in the background. Um, the, the the kind of structures and the and the little windows that you can see in each of these buildings um, also also echoes in a way with the bridge. Sorry, the with the bricks. And so it's it's all of these repetitions in form that also make it a very interesting image formally. So it's it's about the content, but it's also about the form uh, and and. I think she Ito Barrada has a really good way of bringing those two together. Beautiful. So your second image from uh, Moira Davy. Yes, Moira Davy is an artist that really fascinates me, and and from the five that I chosen, uh, she's had a, I think a huge impact on how I think about photography. So this image was on the cover of the of a book that she released that was a kind of a retrospective organized by. Um, the Falk Museum uh, at, at Harvard. So it's interesting because it's a very unspectacular image. Yeah. And, you know, it wouldn't necessarily be everyone's choice for the cover of your retrospective book. And so that means that, you know, in a way, it takes a lot of guts to put an image like this as, as representative of someone's career up until that point. Uh, and I just love that gesture. Um, I think it's a very brave gesture because it's a very sparse image and it's titled Long Life Cool White, right, from 1999. And it turns out that the, the description is of, of what you can read on the, on the tube, on the, um, on the light, on the lighting fixture. Okay. So it's describing, it's describing the, like that kind of, um, what's it called? Um, Incandescent lights? Fluorescent, yes, exactly. Fluorescent, so, fluorescent lights, yeah, fluorescent. Fluorescent, yes, that's right. And so, you know, it it becomes a metaphor, I think, also for what she does. Um, and yet it, it's actually in the image. And, and because I, I think she photographed this with a large format camera, uh, on the print, you can actually see it, you know, but uh, it's very, very small uh, at this scale. and And therefore, it's also... A reflection on photography itself, because you can see a camera on the background, um, and it's playing really, um, like really markedly with uh, depth of field. You know, so it's 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 a little bit like commenting on on certain photographic qualities. Then it's focusing on a on a domestic space, and and this is probably the part that I enjoy the most out of the image. It's really trying to make, let's say, important work, whatever that means, out of whatever you have close at hand. So she has photographed her, her living quarters, let's say, uh, for a long time. And she just photographs whatever she has near um, and, and, and trying to transform it somehow through photography, which is always something that I, that I believe in. So, so it's it's part of an attitude also towards image making, which is something that I appreciate. I like it too. Your third image from Michael Schmidt. Yeah, from all of these people, I think he's the one that has influenced me the most. And and I even made an image that that directly um, uh, references this one in the sense that it's it's something we don't know exactly what it is, but it's something on on a window, right? And it's it's obstructing the view to what's behind it. And so this image is part of a series called uh, Ceasefire, Waffenruhe in, in German. And the series is about um, the Berlin Wall. It's taken 
it's taking the, the the wall as a metaphor for a number of things that cannot be really shown through photography, you know, like the mood of the era, for instance, or how he feels towards his neighborhood, how he feels towards the, the legacy of the Second World War. All of these things are kind of um, mobilized uh, via the, the image of the wall, but the wall is not present in every single image. And so then something like this, this kind of obstruction becomes a gesture towards, towards kind of, again, kind of trying to, to visualize feelings, I would say, that kind of go a little bit against um, the expectations of documentary photography, because in a way, documentary photography is just meant to show what's in front of the camera, right? Uh, but so in th th this, this image is a little bit of a dance between subjectivity and objectivity. Um, and your fourth image and Facundo du Zavria, did I get that close? Yes, very close. <laughs> <laughs> so Facundo du Zavria hasn't really um, influenced me, but I, am, I really appreciate his work because um, the, the new topographics, which is what the, the, this image kind of like relates to very closely, didn't really have an impact in in Latin America in the way that it did in the US and in, and in Europe. Hmm. Um, but there's a handful of photographers that really reflect, let's say, that aesthetic. And he's one of them. And so I, I sympathize with the challenges of photographing Latin America, let's say, through that style. And so he, I think, is very close to that way of looking at the world representative of, of the new topographics or of, let's say, the Dusseldorf school uh, with the Bechers. And so in this case, it's a, it's a typology of stores or storefronts uh, or, or, yeah, most of them are storefronts. There's a few, I think, um, just, just uh, buildings. But it's about how you can read certain things. You can interpret certain things. Uh, there's actual text in the image, so there's things that the that the image is telling you literally, but you can also see that there's graffiti, which then represents obviously the the socioeconomic moment when the image was made. Uh, the images were made right after or around the time of the the big. Um, economic crash in the early 2000s. And so they are part of a series called Siesta Argentina, which means like Argentine Siesta. Mm. And I think they're meant to be evocative of like this moment of transition when things might get better, you know, they're really bad, but they might get better. So it's almost like, like society is a little bit dormant, but will, but will kind of get back on its feet. That's great. So thank I appreciate the introduction to this photographer as well and to this image. Um, we'll finish it off with Thomas Truth. Well, Thomas Truth makes these makes these images of cities, but for a long time, the way that he made these images was by standing right on the middle of the street and kind of like getting like like splitting the street almost equally on both sides, right? There's, there's many things to say about this image. It was made with a large format camera. So if you see the print, it has a lot of detail. I think it's it's also about the difference between architectural photography and urban landscape, let's say, or, 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 or using urban landscape as a genre within fine art photography. You know, with architectural photography, it's about showing a particular building, showing the aesthetic of the architect, um, kind of like mobilizing the image in favor of selling in a way a kind of, of architectural practice. Whereas this image is really more about the uses of space, you know, the use of space in a, in a political sense, in a social sense, perhaps in an economic sense as well, kind of marveling about the, the how the image was made again, which is not easy to stand in the middle of the street yeah. with a large format camera. And so I always think about like, how did he make these? You know, it must have been really difficult. And I've read that he uh, often would wake up early, but you know, in a place like New York, it's never early enough for being in the middle of the street <laughs> with a large format camera. So I think that there was the, the, the um, what do you call it? The logistics of, of, of making this, this series. And, and, and it's also, I, I, I like this aspect, and this is gonna be very pretentious, so I apologize in advance, but like when 
when a foreigner shows, you know, a foreign environment in an in an interesting enough way uh, to to the locals, you know, he, this is a German photographer who got a grant to photograph in the late seventies in New York, uh, and he did something that you know no American photographer at that point had made. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's it's almost like like showing the place to 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 the locals in a in a in a way that engages their imagination and i think that's really powerful well it's a it is a a fantastic look back at new york at a time that i mean the places still exist but it doesn't look like this anymore so. well exactly so i did the very basic exercise of going on on a street view and seeing how the how the street looks like right now and and that's also when you realize that photography is not just information you know because no. You can see you can see the same place, but obviously when the when the um, when the little truck passed by, it's like let's say noon or something. So the light is very different uh, at a different time of the year, and so this is a very melancholic image in a way. Not only now because time has passed, but because of the time when it was like the time of day when it was made, yeah. and so in a way, it becomes like it's very open-ended. You can project your own feelings towards it. Whereas if you see, let's say, the the street view image, you, you take in all the information. It's like, oh, this, right. this store is here, or, you know, I need to make a left turn here to get, you know, it's, it's a little, it's a very different way of taking in the information within the image. Yeah, yeah, that's a great conversation. So Arturo Art Soto, um... Thank you for joining us on the Crit House. It's uh, five great images to discuss and five uh, fascinating photographers and um, your understanding of them added to our knowledge base. So thank you for that. Thank you for having me here. Great pleasure. talking to you. You too. And thank you all for watching the Crit House.